All right, so let's talk through 2.4 number 55, which is apparently uh, commonly forgotten. Uh, okay, so first things first, they tell me that a generalized Riccati equation, which sounds like a kind of cheese, frankly. It totally does. Uh, is of the form this thing. Okay, and they tell me if R is identically negative one, then this is a regular Riccati equation. Okay. And they're saying, let Y1 be a known solution and Y be an arbitrary solution of A. Let Z equal Y minus Y1 show that Z is the solution of a Bernoulli equation with N equals two. Ah, okay. So these questions are a serious mind fuck, frankly, because there's a lot of words, there's a lot of Italian names in here. Um, I'm not really, frankly, that sure what the hell is going on. And they've told me to make this substitution and show a thing that seems real weird. You guys with me on this? I, I just couldn't even get started with this. Yeah, that that's, that's my problem. That's largely where I expect you guys to be on these because they are a little weird to get started. So the key with these is just to take it slow and try to parse the pieces as much as you can. So I'm gonna first look at this thing in parentheses here and say, okay, that's a cool, cute piece of information, but doesn't seem relevant to anything else we're talking about here. With me on that? Okay, so like, thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. I bet Beverly really appreciated knowing this too. Um, but it's just not needed right now. Uh, then I'm going to look at this next statement, let y1 be a known solution. Okay, so what does it mean that y1 is a solution? Does it mean it's of u? Uh, or is it a function of u of some kind? Okay, um, let's see. So the fact that it's a known solution means like I have a formula for this bastard. Yeah. Right, like I know what it is. You've gone through the steps and you figured out that this works. Yeah, or I somehow happened upon it or Jacob was like, yo dude, doesn't y equals x squared work? And then I plugged it in and all of a sudden it did. And I'm like, dude, now we know a solution. Yeah, Why can't it just work like that for integrating factors? <laughs> well, it does sometimes, right? It's like, oh, uh, seven is an integrating factor for this differential equation. You're like, what? Why? Huh? God damn it. <laughs> like, where did you come up with that? Like, there, there are mysteries, things you shall not know. So like here, I don't know exactly how they came up with this solution. But what I know is that it has a formula and that it's a solution. The solution part is actually really important here. What that means is that I know that y1 prime is p of x plus q of x y1 plus r of x y1 squared. Right. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That is because it is a solution. This is true. This is not a question. This is the case. Okay. I when I read that, I I was reading it as if it was solved using variation of parameters. And I assumed y1 was like yh equals function. Yeah, so what they're trying to tell you is like, all right, so here's a special form of a differential equation that's not one that we know. Right, this is just a little bit, it's just a little bit different than a Bernoulli because it's got this P thing. In the case that P is zero, this is the Bernoulli equation. You guys see that? Yeah. In the case that P isn't zero, then it's not a Bernoulli equation. Apparently it's a Riccati equation or a generalized Riccati equation. So I don't know how to solve those, but what they're telling me is, hey, here's actually a way to solve it. You can make this substitution and then you can solve for Z. You guys see that? So 
I think that Y1 is a known solution. That's the statement. Cause, Y1 cause what actually me, solves this. What caught me about this was the notation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's super easy to get lost in what you know and what you don't know here. So they're saying Y is an arbitrary solution. That means that Y is the solution I'm looking for. It's a weird way to phrase it. It's arbitrary, but it's the answer. Exactly. In the same way that Y is the answer to this differential equation, right? Mm -hmm. So they're just saying like, okay, so Y is, y is some solution. Mm -hmm. In the case that Y is a solution, that means that they're assuming that Y prime is P of X plus Q of X Y plus R of X Y squared. Right. That's what it means to be a solution to this thing. Okay. You guys see that? Okay, so let me just make this substitution Are, like they said to. Hold on. You want a real quick question? They say arbitrary solution of A. Is A referring to the Y1 solution? A, a is referring to the, the form oh, yeah, of the okay. differential I equation. A so A is this, yeah. this equation for Okay. Right? Okay, so I'm supposed to make this substitution, which really means that I'm considering, all right, so Z is going to be Y minus Y1. Okay. Huh. Well, let me rearrange that a little bit because I don't know anything about Z right now. You guys see that? Because it says show that Z is a solution of a Bernoulli equation with N equals two. All I did was I was like, I tried to plug Z in in place of Y in a Bernoulli equation with N equals two. Sure. And that's totally reasonable. Uh, the problem is that I don't, I don't know what Z is. And so plugging, Z, like, I don't think that Z solves this equation, right? It pro because this isn't a Bernoulli equation for one thing. It solves some other friggin' equation. And my goal is to find that other equation. So this is a strange question because now I'm working backwards, right? So the step that I'm going to take is I'm going to take this equation here and I'm going to rearrange this into y is z plus y1. You guys see that? Okay. And then what do I know about y? Well, I know that y is a solution. So I'm going to shove that y in here into my original differential equation. So A with Y equals Z plus Y1 is going to become, well, first I need to know what Y prime is. In order to stuff this thing into a differential equation, right, I need to know what Y prime is. So what's Y prime? Depends. Is z a function? Yeah, z is necessarily a function because it's the difference of two functions, right? Okay, so then it would be z prime plus y1 prime. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So I'm going to plug y prime. That's z prime plus y1 prime. And that's going to equal, on my other side, I've got p of x plus q of x times, and now this is where I should have a y, right? So here I'm going to have a z plus y1. You guys with me on that? Mm -hmm. And then I'm also going to have a r of x. And then here I need a y squared. So that's going to be z plus y1 square. You guys all good with that? Yeah. So this was just cram everything in. Now, there's one thing I know that I haven't used yet. And that was that y prime solves this, or sorry, y1 prime 
has a property that I know because y1 solves this differential equation. You guys oh, that? is it so, that y1 prime is equal to p of x plus q of x times y plus r of x times y squared? Yep, this is y1 prime up here. So I'm gonna put that in right here. You guys see that? So I know that y1 solves A. So I can put that solving in, which means that I know what y1 prime is. So I'm gonna get z prime plus, and now I just need all this stuff. So I've got p of x plus q of x y1 plus r of x y1 squared. And this is on the other side, this is p of x plus q of x times z. Uh, actually, I'm going to foil that out just a little bit. Oh, I see. Now I see. Yep, it's actually really cool, right? So I'm going to kind of multiply out a little bit. So I've got q of x times z, and then I've got q of x times y1. And then I've got a r of x, and this is going to be a z squared, an r of x, z, y, 1. That'd be 2 z, y, 1. Oh, good call. Sorry, handwriting things. Okay, so I have a two R of X, Z, Y, one. And then I'm also gonna have an R of X, Y, one squared. You guys good with that? Okay, and now something cool is gonna happen. So because Y1 solves A, I get a whole bunch of stuff that cancels. I got a P of X on this side. I got a P of X on that side. I got a Q of X, Y1. I got a Q of X, Y1. And I got an R of X, Y1 squared and an R of X, Y1 squared. So now if I collect what I've got left here, I have z prime is q of x times z plus r of x times z squared plus 2 r of x y1 of x, I'm putting for emphasis, times c. You guys with me on that? And now just in order to see fully, I'm gonna rearrange to a Bernoulli form. So the, um, what's the Bernoulli form look like in general? I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, what's a Bernoulli equation look like? It's going to be y prime plus a function of x times y equals a function, another function of x times y to the r. And r, oops, and r is an r. arbitrary integer. Or sorry, arbitrary number that isn't one or zero. Perfect. R can't be zero or one. So all I need to do is rearrange this thing to have it in the Bernoulli form, right? Okay, so if I'm rearranging this thing, I'm gonna leave it as Z prime, and then I'm gonna need all this stuff with a plain Z on it. So I've got a plain Z here and here. That's playing the role of kind of Y. So I'm going to have a 
plus, and then in here I've got a minus q of x minus 2r of x y1 of x times z. And then on the other side, that's going to be r of x z squared. And I should like note, I guess, that 2 is not 0 or 1. <laughs> I didn't see that. Does it matter at all that we have y1 in there? Good. Yeah, kind of. So the thing that matters here is that y1 was a known function of x. Or it was a known solution. y was some arbitrary solution. So if I was left with a y in here, I'd be like, but you don't know what y is, so good friggin' luck, right? But because y1 is a known solution, I can just put its formula in there. That's okay. Fair enough. Yeah. And so what this what this thing is going to let me do, like the point of this whole problem, is they're they're telling you if you have a single solution to a generalized Riccati equation, you can get any other solution to that Riccati equation by doing this substitution and then solving the resulting Bernoulli equation. This is a really common technique in, um, in differential equations. In fact, we've seen it a bunch of times where we like, we run variation of parameters on something, right? And then all of a sudden the result is separable. And then we can solve that separable equation and then we can go back and answer the original one. That's gonna be a really common trick here. Is that Sort of makes sense. So this one's a, a little bit weird because this takes a Riccati equation, whatever the hell that is, and turns it into a Bernoulli equation for me to solve. But I know how to solve a Bernoulli equation. That's a variation of parameters problem. So I'd go do my variation of parameters problem. And in the process, I'm going to get a separable equation. And pretty quick, you're back at the bottom. You know, putting E's under stuff. What is a Riccati equation? Like, what is it for? I have no idea. Oh, OK. It, it, the only thing that I found that was interesting about it is that it takes the form of a quadratic equation, but where the leading coefficients in the quadratic equation are functions of x. Joe is now looking up what a Riccati equation is. Yeah, I mean, I want to showcase one thing for you guys, which is like, um, if you go read the Wikipedia article. Oh, God, math Wikipedia. It should be noted that Wikipedia for math topics is one correct it is really a good resource all all the articles are really good and they're usually correct and quite complete um the other pro the problem with correct and complete is that they're correct and complete which means there aren't any of the convenient little lies that we tell you guys all the time and so they're really hard to read because they assume that you know all the things yeah, I've, yeah I've like, noticed that a lot. Like the one line, more generally, it is used to refer to matrix equations with an analysis quadratic term, which occur in both continuous time and discrete time linear quadratic Gaussian, Gaussian <laughs> control. I'm like, I don't know half the words in that line. Uh, yeah, I remember Chris Wells, I think his last name was, telling me he would spend like hours upon hours like getting lost in math Wikipedia. Yeah, it's really, really easy to fall down a really deep rabbit hole here. And some of the rabbit holes will lead you to the like archive. Like you'll, you know, you'll start reading a thing and you'll like click on a link and then you'll click on a citation and then you'll click on a citation and then you'll click on a citation and pretty quick, you'll be up against a paper that somebody like hasn't even published yet. They just put it on the archive last year for other researchers. So you can really quickly get to the bleeding edge here. Um, and the bleeding edge of mathematics is a long ways from ODEs. So you'll encounter a lot of words in the way. I was looking up something the other day and the first thing it came up with was, was a Wikipedia article. I'm like, okay, I'll take a look at it. I think I know what I'm getting into. You know, I know I'm not gonna understand half of it. And sure enough, it, it got into some pretty nasty partial differential equations about halfway down the page. Yeah, I mean, the moral of like, Flipping through this Riccati 
equation Wikipedia article for me is that I they don't have an obvious application because I think otherwise that would be in here. Yeah. Um, they are not super new, which makes me think they probably had some kind of physics application, but I don't know what it is. Um, ask Anka. I think I'll keep it my goal from here until I eventually stop call going to college because I've reached the roof, but I'm going to make it my goal to understand these articles. Yeah, uh, it is super great. Like, I still remember the first time in graduate school that I read through an entire math Wikipedia <laughs> article and understood it. <laughs> it was like, holy shit, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, this shit's really starting to click, man. <laughs> At some point, I really want to be able to read through the introductory quantum mechanics page on Wikipedia and understand oh, at yeah. least what all the symbols are, let alone what it actually says. Yeah, it should be noted that I do not generally understand um, even most of some of the math Wikipedia articles. Most of them are outside of my area and thus are really like math is a really broad kind of tree. And in order to in order to get done with a like a subject topic, you know, a study topic, usually you kind of drive one of the branches all the way to the edge. Um, there are a few people who take multiple branches. And there are fewer people yet who understand some of all the branches. Uh, so yeah. you're still recording, just so you know, Joe. I know this is general philosophy. Okay. Let that be a philosophy to you. <laughs>